This track week continues with Eminem's Nail in the Coffin because I love listening to people talk shit about each other and this has been a very fun week for me. Just to give you guys a heads up, I'd say the next four to six videos probably gonna be Eminem diss track related and I know you're gonna be like, Crip, there's other rappers out there, but once I get started on this diss track segment that I'm going through, I just wanna finish them all because I'm working up to the granddaddy video of them all where I rank Eminem diss tracks that he's made on other people. So I know I still have Warning, I still have The Sauce, Bully, girls uh there's probably more than i'm missing but those are four that i think off right off the top of my head so we got some bitches to react to but before i do that i'd love to thank the sponsor of this video me that's right me i created a non-profit organization with my cousin and we are giving back to the community that we were raised in and the first project that we're doing with this non-profit is building an 18 hole disc golf course i've already put a ton of my own money into this but if you guys want to help out with this non-profit there is a link in the description where you can read some more about it but i'm offering different sponsorship levels so if you have something that you want to advertise there's a level that you can do for this disc golf course to advertise some of your stuff but i also have a random donation one where you can give out a minimum of five dollars and that helps us go a long way you have no idea plus it's a tax write-off so be thinking about that but yeah if you guys want to donate any kind of money like i said it's a non-profit all the money goes directly into the projects that we're working on to build up our city and give back to the community that raised us but enough of the feel good sappy stuff let's listen to eminem absolutely brutally brutalize somebody brutally i will preface this by obviously i've heard this song in passing before but i've never reacted to it and you listen to music a different way when you break it down and try to react. I'm aware that this is a Benzino disc or a Source Magazine disc. It's all kind of correlated into one, but that's pretty much the extent of my knowledge. So let's dive on into this. Let's listen to my man M and uh, see what we're working with right here. If you guys have any other videos that you want me to react to diss track wise from Eminem specifically, drop them down in the comments. But here we go. Blah. This motherfucker, man. Don't shut up, will you? Talking about I owe you. Bitch, you owe me. Right now. Dude, listen to the assertiveness in his voice. This is my favorite style of Eminem. Be like this. I don't really wanna hurt no feelings, but I'm only being real when I say nobody wants to hear their grandfather <laughs> rap. Nope. And old men have heart attacks, and I don't wanna be responsible for that. So put the mic down and walk away. You can still have a little bit of dignity. I would never claim to. All right, before we get into the first verse, that's the hook. It sticks with you. Very memorable hook. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of old jokes. They don't age well, pun intended, because I know, I mean, M's pushing 50 years old right now. Still rapping incredibly, but, like, everybody gets old, so I've never been a big fan of the old jokes, unless you say it in a really funny way. Uh, I love how he talked about old men have heart attacks, and he mentioned this a lot because of Everlast having his heart attack. Uh, but that's a completely different story that we'll get to whenever we listen to the Everlast disses that came out. There's so many, dude. There's so many that I'm thinking of. Uh, there's got to be like eight videos I got to make over this shit. But uh, yeah, Hook definitely sticks in your head. Let's see what this verse is working with right here. I would never claim to be no Raven Zeno, an 83-year-old fake Pacino. So how can he hold me over some balcony without throwing his lower back out as soon as he goes to lift me? <laughs> Please don't, you'll probably fall with me and I'll ask the boat be history. But then again, you finally get your wish because you'll be all over the street like 50 Cent. Oh, you fucking punk. As one of my favorite lines of this whole song because like Raven Zeno was trying to portray this mobster gangster mentality and like wanted people to be afraid of him because they, they, he wanted people to think that he was this mob guy that you don't fuck with and Am was like dude we know you're not this gangster that you're trying to be and basically just saying you know we'd be you'd be all over the street like 50 cent actually is because 50 is actually a gangster he's actually out there on the streets doing shit um and obviously the double of falling on the street and splat you're all over the street because he tried to lower him over this balcony and i think benzino said something in one song about lowering over a balcony onto a stage or something like like holding him by his feet up off of a stage uh so he's responding to that and uh it's a funny way to do the old joke like i said I'm not a big fan of old jokes but when you can do it in a funny way like that uh it's it's funny obviously fucking idiot all right here we go because you'll be all over the street like 50 cent <laughs> Fucking punk pussy, fuck you, chump. Give me a one on one, see if I don't fuck you up. Try to jump the rough riders and they cut you up. And you put Jada on a track, that's how much you suck dick in the industry. Mm. Swear that you Jada was with the rough riders. You sit behind a fucking desk at the source, butt kissing and begging motherfuckers for guest appearances. And you can't even get the clearances, cause real lyricists don't even respect you or take you serious. It's not that we don't like you, we hate you, period. Oh, so those rhyme schemes are so sick right there, dude. I I want to see a highlighted rhyme scheme about this 
But, you know, the fact of him saying, like, real lyricists, it's not that we don't like you, we fucking hate you, period. This is why you can't get the clearances to get the uh, the guest stars that you want on the Source magazine for these interviews because we just, we don't respect you at all, Benzino. You're a bitch. Nobody fucking likes you. Uh, and it's just, it's a reality check, and I love it. Hate you, period. Talk about a midlife crisis, damn. Last week he was shaking Obi Trice's hand. Now he's a buster. What the fuck's with that? Get on a track, kissing us, kissing 50s ass, and asking me what I know about indictments. Fight me, bitch. I got two cases and probation. Fight me. Mm. What do I know? Oh, yeah, about this is back when in... this is back when Eminem had that gun charge for fucking pistol whipping somebody. Front of a judge, like a man ready to take whatever sentence he has. What you know about your wife slicing the wrist right in front of the only thing that you have in this world? A little girl, and Ugh. I put that on her. When this is all over, I would never try to make her a star and eat off her. I don't oh. know shit about <laughs> no shopping rocks, but what you know Yo. about it? Pop shops, rocking spots, where you're the only white boy up in that bitch just ripping, pressing up your own flyers and your stickers, sticking them bitches up after spending six hours at Kinko's, making copies of your covers of cassette singles to sell them out of the trunk of your tracer, spending your whole paychecks at disc makers. What you know about being bullied over? half your life oh that's right you should know what that's like you're half white oh. damn dude i'm just getting lost in the song like i'm not even trying to break shit down I, it's one of those songs you just want to keep fucking listening to it uh the whole half white thing you know it's got to fuck benzino up because like he did not want to talk about the white side of himself wanted to be all about black heritage and black history the source is a black owned magazine uh just he was very about that and just completely wanted to people to forget about it. he's like an anti-logic where logic wants people to know he's biracial benzino did not and uh that, that's just a funny way of bringing that out and i love him talking about you know benzino's like what you know about like catching charges and stuff and him's like i got two of them right now I, I literally got an assault weapons charge for beating some dude in the face with the butt of a nine millimeter and then talking about some other struggles that he's had in life about Kim slitting her wrist in front of Haley uh, and like all the come ups that he had about making his own mixtapes and printing off his stuff at Kinko's and sticking up his own flyers like doing he was his own uh, street team. And uh, I think it was just a cool way of disproving some stuff that Benzino said about him, like having it easy coming up in the rap game. So. I like it. I like it. And I love M's voice right here. This is the biggest thing uh, that I think is the difference between current day Eminem and this 2000 to 2004 era Eminem, where his voice was just so much different back here, so much more assertive. And there was like, a whole lot of energy and he's yelling and it's just anger. And I've always said pissed off Eminem is my favorite Eminem. Okay, I'm done talking. Half white, vanilla ice, Philippines and rice. I'm eating you alive inside. Jesus Christ, if you're that much of a gangster, put the mic down. You should be out killing motherfuckers right now. <laughs> Kill a motherfucker dead. Kill him dead, bitch. Shoot him in the fucking head. Go ahead, bitch. Slap my mom. Slap the fuck out of her. She can't sue you. She wouldn't get a buck out of you because you broke his fuck. Uh, Suck, you're a fucking choker. Oh, uh, this is the best line in the whole song it's so fucking funny i love it dude i, I fucking love that line oh man suck. you're a fucking joke if you was really selling coke well then what the fuck you stop for dummy if you slew some crack you'd make a lot more God. money than you do from rap you'll never have no security you'll never be famous you never know what it's like to be rich like the bitch ain't it raymond here let me break this shit down in layman's terms for you just to make sure that you can understand it's a cannabis ain't using too many complicated fucking words for you here let me slow it down for you so that you can understand if i say it slower let it go dog it's over i don't want oh, to man like ending it out strong right there with just like the crazy ass reality check uh, <laughs> and him like be like, yo, if you're really a gangster that hard, you should be out killing people right now. Like, you you, you talk like you're out killing people all the time. And, like, if you stay, like, why'd you stop selling crack? You're gonna make way more money selling crack than you are from raps because you fucking suck at rapping. Nobody wanna listen to you rap. Uh, it's just a whole lot of, like, inner emotions that M is just completely just bah, 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 just fucking hitting the shit out of him right there. And uh, that's just fucking funny. And I think this is a hilarious diss track. But, like, his voice on this sounds amazing. The cadences that we've heard. The rhyme schemes are insane. Uh, another thing I want to talk about was, like, early on, he was talking about Benzino using his kid for fame. And, like, Emma's was like, I'll never do that with Haley. And he stayed true to that. He's never, like, tried to put Haley on a song. Well, I mean, he's put Haley on a song. But, like, he's kept her out of the limelight as much as possible. Um, 
and Benzino, I mean, he's got Coil Array now, so did he, like, prophesize that? That's kind of crazy. I'm sure there's some shit that I'm not aware of from back in the day, um, because I was seven. But this has been a great fucking diss track so far. This, I don't really want to hurt no feelings, but I'm only being real when I say nobody wants to hear their grandfather rap. Uh-uh. And old men have heart attacks, and I don't want to be responsible for that. So put the mic Dude, this down is so walk catchy. Away. And still have a little bit of dignity. <laughs> Talking about I have motherfuckers calling your crib. Bitch, you ain't even got a fucking crib. Oh, uh, the Tupac approach. Talk at the end phone. of the track. Fucking bum. You ain't even got a phone. No crib. All right. Shut me down at your little fucking source magazine if I come back when you and attack you. Bitch, you attack me first. Take it like a man and shut the fuck up. Mm. Fuck your little magazine, too. I don't need your little fucking magazine. I got double XL's number anyways. Ah! And y'all can't stand it because they get bigger than y'all. Ah, that's gonna fucking hurt! Oh. Prophesize the future! Double XL's like the only magazine that's still around. And even they're falling off. But like, people still listen to the double XL ciphers and care about the double XL freshman. The source, uh, I've never been aware of the source in my lifetime. I know they gave out the mics and stuff, but they haven't been a thing in like 15 years, I feel like. Oh. And by the way, how'd I look on the VMAs? Ah, uh, another one. watching me from whatever fucking TV he was watching me from. In Boston. The mean streets of Boston. <laughs> fucking sissy. Then you got a scared up here, motherfucker. Suck our motherfucking pigs. Oh. And for those that don't know, don't get it twisted. Ah. Uh. The source has a white own. The source has a white owner. All right. That's got to piss Benzino off. Uh, I, like I said, it's been so long since this came out. Like, there's no way for me to fact check it right now um, without doing any kind of research. And I'm, I'm not going to do that, okay? Uh, love this song. This is a fucking fantastic diss song. Uh, it's got a hook in it that's catchy as shit. Makes you remember the diss. And uh, has some really fucking funny lines that are insane quotables. And uh, I like it a lot. But let me know what songs you guys want me to listen to next. Um, this has been definitely one of my favorite Eminem diss tracks that I've heard so far. Uh, and I can't wait to rank all them. It's, it's going to be a fun video to try to rank all these diss tracks. But before I leave, I do want to give a nice big thank you to everybody that you see on the screen right here. These are my YouTube channel membership supporters. Videos like this obviously get copyright claimed and your boy doesn't make any kind of money off of it whatsoever. So these guys support me directly through YouTube. If you want to sign up for that, it will be down there in the description. You get a cool badge next to your name. You get priority comments. So I'm always going to reply back to you. I'm always going to see it and heart it so everybody else can see it. You get discount codes for merchandise on my website and based on the tier that you get you get certain slots put in for my wheel that i spend at the end of every single month to get out free merchandise it's a big fun time so uh yeah do that if you want to shout out to everybody watching this video and uh shout out to my nonprofit organization if you want to donate to that that's fucking awesome as well but love you guys and i will see you tomorrow with another eminem diss track Pick it up, blah, blah. where were you on the nights that i sat by myself in my room out my mind trying to handle my health all alone on the phone hoping you pick up the cell but now i know how it goes when i get your voicemail where were you on the nights that i sat by myself in my room